now Wednesday, and I have concocted oh, a really delicious mixture today. So seltzer, um, just plain seltzer, apple juice, and then pineapple and orange juice. I can tell this is going to be my obsession till the end of August, just mixing different juices for seltzer. Mmm. It's just so perfect for summertime. So Kate and I decided to take two weeks to go through this. And that's been really nice. Um, only reading about 30 pages a day. I can tell there's going to be some real heartbreak in this, but for some reason I'm really in the mood for it. I don't know why. And um, I decided to... This is really bright. Hold on. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. I decided to give up on documenting every last book that I read on Bookstagram because I was like 15 books behind and then I wanted to talk about the books that I was currently enthusiastic about and give more thoughts on them. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, I started last night, I had the audiobook of Arabella by Georgia Heyer and just an hour and a half in, I'm really excited about it. So I'll definitely be wanting to um, listen to more of that audiobook. Although I don't know if I'm going to fit it in because in about an hour, Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Rambles and I are going to do a Google Hangout and watch um, an episode of Once Upon a Time while I like get dinner prepped. That'll be really fun. So um, in the meantime, I'm going to read four more chapters of When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit. This is just like a fabulous reading week because I'm absolutely loving everything I'm reading. I realized I need to read seven chapters a day between now and Saturday so I can have my book club book read. So seven chapters a day of The Widow Barnaby. And I'm really loving that too. I was worried about reading that quickly because I'd been reading it so slowly. But you know how sometimes you can just kind of change your reading speed for a classic if need be. And it's not like a Thomas Hardy where I want to stop and think about lots of paragraphs. It's just very action oriented. There are some passages I highlight, but they're just very humorous. So easily read through seven chapters. Um, so I have 21 chapters left. Um, and then oh, I can't remember if I talked about this, but I picked up Flowers in the Rain um, and Other Stories by Rosamond Pilcher. I think I did talk about it. I think I did. It's just short stories by Rosamond Pilcher. It's irresponsible to start another book, but I just saw it and it was just calling to me. And I've really been enjoying just do one, doing one story a day. I'm in one called Endings and Beginnings. And um, it's great. I am also torn because then I want to read Stepsister, but I should just stop talking and work on reading the four chapters of this and see what else I can fit in until 3.30. Good morning. Um, can you say hi? <laughs> so he's getting his two-year molars and has the worst diaper rash. Poor boy. Yeah, and actually some people say, like, we'll use cloth diapers. They're actually better. But that's actually why we don't. Um, we own them. We use them all on Peter. And then I tried to use them on him. And it was like instantly he got a rash just using the cloth and I think because they aren't quite as absorbent as disposables which is so annoying and it's better for the environment obviously but even um but now getting the molars uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when they're teething often they're um, yeah. Yeah, they're getting uh. he gets a diaper rash so we're battling that using all sorts of strategies, aren't we? Yeah. But I did want to talk about, um, <laughs> I did want to talk about how behind I am on booktube videos. <coughs> and I just keep getting more and more behind. And what happens <coughs> is I see the number on my playlist. I don't even want to say the number. I'm so embarrassed. <coughs> and then I think, well, you know what? I'm just going to watch something in my <coughs> suggested feed instead because I'm so behind on my... I don't even want to say the number because I'm so behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just keep getting more and more behind. So I think I did 
a really good job keeping up with my reading this week. I'm very happy with it, very proud of it. And this weekend, I might just focus on Betsy and the Great World and then watching as much booktube as possible. Um, like when the boys are down and I'm not doing something else, just watching a ton of booktube and really catching up. Um, I don't have like a goal in mind, but I think that's what I'm going to do this weekend. I would love that. Um, I just keep getting my hopes up that I'm just going to have a week with like so many good energy days. And um, Tuesday was a pretty good energy day. And then that's been it. So I'm hoping Friday will be. I um, did new exercises I've been given. We'll see if they help. It's Saturday morning and another fatigue day. I'm so bummed. I just got my hopes up because when I first started doing physical therapy, I had three good days in a week. So I thought that was the new norm. I don't think it's the new norm. And I think it's just gonna be a lot of troubleshooting and kind of guessing about if it's making me actually feel better. <sighs> so I'm very disappointed about that. Um, also I'm having, I was talking, chatting with Doris on Boxer today. I'm calling it fluff read burnout because I feel so sick. Most of the time, I feel like I'm not up for big old classics. And so then I just resort to genre fiction, which is fine, but it's that I've read so much of it. So I'm on the hunt for uplifting literary fiction. That's what I'm going to try. I ordered over a month ago, I'm at the post office parking lot, or ordered over a month ago when I saw um, Victoria from Eve's Alexandria post on Instagram about this multi biscuit brew tea that tastes like tea and biscuits, people. Tea and biscuits. Now, it's taken so long to get here um, that, and it doesn't expire until November of 2020, I might wait until Victober to open this because it feels a little frivolous to buy another one for Victober since like it was only seven dollars it didn't cost that much but to have it like shipped overseas so mm, I'm gonna see if I can wait um okay then I did get um Doris and Carolyn not Doris Bree and Carolyn and myself are going to be reading through as many Phyllis Whitney books as we can get our hands on. We're very excited about it. So I ordered a little like, what do I want to say? Like bulk package or whatever. And a couple of them are duplicates. So I'm just going to give them to Bree or Carolyn, like whichever ones you know didn't have it. Um, Rainbow in the Mist. So this is one that I did have. So I will be passing this along such a cool color cover these covers are just so extra and i love it this one i did not have the singing stones um on top of lynn's mountain disturbances from the past menace the present i mean you just can't beat these covers okay and then i did not have this one woman without a past she had a past she never knew and a future barred by strange and powerful secrets so I'm not as big a fan of the floral covers just because they're not nearly as dramatic as the other ones. Like this one, for instance, Feather on the Moon. She had given up all her hope for she had given up all hope for her kidnapped daughter until a stranger beckoned from beautiful Vancouver Island. Oh, they're just glorious. Um, and then I do prefer the cover that Becky gave me of the turquoise mask which the blurb for that is to unravel a family secret. She must unearth a past that could endanger her life. Oh, look at that. The gold foil. And then this one is a, it's seen better days, but that's okay. Cause these are out of print. Um, Silver sword amid the exotic beauty of Hawaii. A woman searches for the secret of her past. Take a look at that. So half the fun of doing this Phyllis Whitney like read through is going to be hunting these books down. I am also, before I grocery shop, heading to the library and stopping at a half price books that's in between the library and the grocery store. And they have three Phyllis Whitney waiting for me. Hopefully they're covers that I like. 
the mass market paperback like got the covers are the ones that I like the most. Um, yeah. So she's like Mary Stewart and I've read all Mary Stewart's now. So on to Phyllis Whitney. So it's, um, late, late afternoon, early evening now. Um, and I'm back, uh, after going to the library, um, I did stop at the half price books to get more Phyllis Whitney books, but when it showed up, I can't believe I didn't even think to ask. They were like hard covers without a slip case or anything. Like they just didn't look pretty at all. And so I'm like, well, these are ones that I'm acquiring. I don't want to get them. So the guy was really nice and I was, I would have felt really silly, like walking out of there with copies that I didn't even want. Um, so I have made progress on the literary fiction front. Uh, first of all, I stopped in the library bookshop, which I'm really surprised. Um, sometimes I won't buy much and then other times I just find like these amazing little gems. So I found like water for chocolate. I know a couple people when I was like first on booktube um, read this. Stephanie from That's What She Read, Hillary from Your Robot Friend, maybe Sarai from Sarai Talks Books. I just remember several like literary fiction readers reading this and really liking it. Um, I think it's just very, it's supposed to have like very tongue in cheek humor, but there's a the, like relationship that the sisters have is a big part of the story. So I'll really like that. Um, and then I also texted my dad and he sent me several titles that I put on hold, um, but I have put several things on hold. So I'll just make my way through his list. I put the audiobooks on hold of those. Um, I've heard really good things about Tim Winton. Um, so I think this will have some sad things in this because it says it's um, the shared experiences of the two overpopulated clans running the gamut, running the gamut from drunkenness, adultery and death to resurrection, marriage and birth bond them to each other and to the bustling, hustling house in ways no one could have anticipated. Um, and he, Cloud Street exemplifies the brilliant ability of fiction to captivate and inspire. So it's not that I don't want books that don't have sad things, but I just want it to end on a redemptive note. Um, so yeah, I've heard good things and Cloud Street, I think is his most iconic. Um, and that's one that when I saw like the big hardback from the library, I just found it very intimidating. And so since it's a, it was there for a dollar at the bookstore, I decided to pick it up. And then I was so excited. I couldn't believe I found this an Elizabeth Googe book, The Rosemary Tree. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited because I love Elizabeth Googe. Um, I read one of hers in December. So I'd like, I have one, two, three, four. I think I have four more of hers. Um, so I want to read that. And then already thinking about Cloak and Dagger Christmas, I picked up Labyrinth by Kate Moss because um, I want to try to have like variety in the type of mysteries that I'm going to read then, especially since I haven't been in much of a mystery mood. I want to do that. Um, and then as far as library checkouts go, I don't know if Cormac McCarthy is the right category, but I did pick up a CD audiobook of All the Pretty Horses because they didn't have it on e-audiobook. Um, so I will be trying that out. And then I realized Ian McEwen is an author whose books I have liked. Um, and for some reason, I am just not that interested in trying out The Children Act or Amsterdam, um, which are the other ones by him that I have that I haven't read. So I got Sweet Tooth, and I actually also got the CD audiobook of that and the physical copy of that. Um, and it's just about um, a woman's life and I think there's going to be kind of a love story in that. Um, so we'll see if I like that. And then uh, I want to try Wallace Stegner. I know he can be a controversial figure like his book Angle of Repose. Um, kind of like where he got the material. Whatever. Um, but it's he still could write really good books. So I'm still interested in him. And I picked up The Big Rock Candy Mountain. This was one of the ones that was available on audiobook on Hoopla, so I thought maybe I could pair it. Also, plus, I didn't want to check it out on Hoopla without investigating the writing style, so I read, like, the first couple pages at the library, and I really liked it. Um, and it's about um, Bo Mason and his wife and their two boys drifting 
from town to town, from state to state, and Bo seeking out his fortune, um, and rum running through treacherous back roads of the American Northwest. I think this sounds really fun for summertime. Um, and then Annie Dillard is an author who popped up. So I got the May Trees. Um, I think her books are supposed to be like very quiet. And then um, I don't know if this will be what I want it to be, but it sounds really sweet. Uh, About a Boy by Nick Hornby. I've always wanted to watch the Hugh Grant movie and it seems like it could be a really sweet story. So I checked that out also. Checked out a bunch. I just really want something I can sink my teeth into. Have been listening to The Wonder today and it has been so enjoyable. So I think I need to call it a day with my Arabella by Georgette Heyer. Um, I've just read so much romance this summer and like just pure romance and I like never do that. I like I do Susanna Kearsley or Mary Stewart if I want romance. It's not just unadulterated romance. Um, and so I'm like extra done, unfortunately. Arabella, it was like fun, but just wasn't that compelled. Same. Okay, so we read If You Decide to Go to the Moon. And why did we read this today, Peter? What day is it? Um, I can't remember. It's been 50 years since we landed on... The moon. Since we landed on the moon. That's Wait, right. we didn't. I <laughs> know we didn't. Who, do you know who the first man to walk on the moon was? Uh, I can't remember. Neil Armstrong. So you know what we're going to do now? <laughs> we're going to go on YouTube and watch a video of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Does that sound cool? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So we just finished up book club and I wanted to show you some of the Ebenezer Maxwell Mansion. We had a great discussion about um, The Widow Barnaby by Francis Trollope and I will show you the fancy new bathroom they've put in. And this is wallpaper. It's hand blocked Victorian Gothic wallpaper and it's exclusive to the Maxwell Mansion. So here's the kitchen with all the old uh, like kitchenware. And then here's the dining room. And then in here, here's a sitting room or the office. And I love, I know you'll all appreciate the old, all the old books. And then I will show you where we discuss our books every month. This is such a treat to get to discuss in here. Here's the clock. Look at this old piano. When we had our Christmas party, my friends came and played Christmas carols on this very piano. Um, yes. Uh, and I love the old couches. It says, kindly do not repose. So yes, this is just such a cool opportunity. And then... Diane, who runs the book club with me, showed me. She ordered this bind up of Wagner the Werewolf. Um, this was a Penny Dreadful that was published. I can't remember what year, but definitely Victorian era. And next month, we're going to read aloud little bits out of this. I mean, it's ginormous. It, it went for years, I think. Um, but we got this bind up, and we're just going to go around reading it. It's going to be so fun. This week, I do have a buddy read of A Desperate Fortune by Susanna Kearsley with Robin from Driftless Reader and um, Bree Hill. Uh, yeah, so I'm loving that I get to do a buddy read with both of them, and it's going to be great. I, it's The last Susanna Kearsley we read was in May, because we skipped June. That's what it is. Um, and then I really need to get a move on. Um, Betsy in the Great World, Betsy's Wedding. Just have four chapters left of When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit. And then I need to catch up because I didn't read this weekend. I was just so tired after going out. Um, Beauty and Thorns uh, by Kate Forsyth. So Kate and I are continuing to read through this and really enjoying it. Um, ideally, I would love to read a short story a day, continuing with that and Flowers in the Rain by Rosamund Pilcher. Um, and then this is one that I started in January. My plan was to read some each month, but 
that fell off the wayside real fast. Um, and so I've just decided I just want to finish it when I can. But The Meadowland by John Lewis Stemple, it's really beautifully written, just kind of gives little snippets of life in this meadow from month to month. Um, so I'm on April. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this book by him. And I'm already like, ooh, at Christmas, if we're going to give books to anyone, I feel like I should give John Lewis Stemple books. Because I feel like he could suit lots of different readers. Um, okay. And then, you know, I was saying, I just was tired of reading frivolous books. So out of my library hall, the one that I started was The Big Rock Candy Mountain. I sat down on Saturday night and I flew through 50 pages. I think sometimes I think I either have to read like modern books or Victorian literature and Victorian literature, you know how much I love it, but it's like reading another dialect and I forget there's so much in between. Um, so yeah, this was published, I think in 1943. Um, and his writing is so compelling. Um, I don't think it's going to be the most cheerful of stories, but it's such compelling writing. Um, and I just, I can't believe how readable it is. And I really want to know what's going to happen to these characters, but I want to talk about something about this book. I don't want to recommend this kind of uninhibited. There is an extremely, really uncomfortable, really cringe, kind of made me sick to my stomach, racist scene in this. And I think it was a thing that was kind of regular at the time. This is set in 1901. So I think this was a thing that was pretty standard practice that I just was really ignorant about. Either way, it's extremely disturbing. So if you're sensitive to that, I would hate to recommend this book to you, you know, just wholeheartedly without that going in. It's really bad. Um, so I could totally respect and understand, you know, if somebody got to that part and was like, okay, I want no part in this book. Um, so that being said, it's a really, really gripping story and I'm just 65 pages in now. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get reading. We are staying in today because it is yet another fatigue day. And I was thinking, what could be something really fun for Peter? And I was looking around on Hoopla for audiobooks. And look at this. They have the Boxcar Children. What's this one called? Do you remember? Oh, uh, the Panther Mystery. The Panther Mystery. Yep. The so this is, this is Peter's very first Boxcar Children. I'm so excited for him. And I told him how I loved these books when I was a kid. So here we go. Oasis Audio presents The Panther Mystery by... Look at that stick you found. I have done some reorganization of all of the books that I am currently reading or hope to be reading eventually at some point soon. Um, so yeah, we have this dresser in the corner of our family room, living room. I don't know. It's like where everything happens. Um, like, yeah, just this room that you see a lot. So over here, these are some of the books that have been on my currently reading um, on Goodreads. Forever, Meadowland, Missing Joseph by Elizabeth George, A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr, Letters of Mrs. Gaskell. You can see how big that is. I would love to just like finish a ton of it in August. I don't know if it will happen though. Grania, which was on my Victober TBR last year and I've still been wanting to read it. Virago Book of Victorian Ghost Stories, Elizabeth Gaskell's Biography by Jenny Uglo, and that is how far I got in it, but I was really enjoying what I was reading of it. Um, and if I'm really like 
feeling like Victober, Victober isn't here soon enough, then I should just read that, right? Um, then a burglary, another one that was on my Victober TBR and on my five star TBR predictions. Beauty and Thorns, that I'm reading with Kate from the novel Nomad, Flowers in the Rain, the Rosamund Pilcher short story collection, A Desperate Fortune by Susanna Kearsley, that I'm reading with Bree and Robin, Big Rock Candy Mountain by Wallace Stegner. This was a Lucinda Riley book I won in a giveaway. And then here's her other book, The Storm Sister. And then a friend wrote this book, When Valleys Bloom Again. It's a historical fiction. Um, and so I wanted to read that. And then Doris and I will be reading Crossroads of Twilight next week. And then I did not update you before, but I finished Betsy and the Great World. And sadly, it is actually my least favorite out of the series, just because I so miss all of the people in Deep Valley. She's traveling, so that's really fun to see all these different countries and see her experience different cultures, learning languages, and writing across the world. Her love for writing is really just really special. However, I miss all the other characters so much. I'm very, very grateful that Betsy and the Great World is not the last book in the series. Betsy's Wedding, which is August's read, is. So I'm glad it didn't end on that note. And here are the four classics a thon books that you'll see. Um, you will have seen my classics a thon TBR go up by the time this vlog is up. So I have On the Beach, The Four Feathers, The Flame Trees of Thika, The Virginian. So then um, Christy, the, tur the Turn of the Screw, and um, The Scarlet Pimpernel will all be library books. And then this one is Kingdom of Exiles that I checked out from the library a while ago, but then I got tired of all my fluff reads. So this would have been a great summer read if I had not burned out on that kind. Um, and then I have the like CD disc of Sweet Tooth by Ian McEwen. Um, and then the physical copy down there about a boy by Nick Hornby. Um, these are three books I need to give back to my parents. All the Pretty Horses CD audiobook. Uh, and then the May Trees by Annie Dillard. Annie Dillard is a literary fiction author I've heard recommended. So sitting down to film a video. That's why I'm in front of the backdrop and I feel like I hadn't updated the um, vlog in a while. I've been good at taking clips. I don't know where the week has gone. Um, one thing I do know is I have been watching so much booktube and right now I am down to 384 videos. Mm. We're out of cream so I just did like a cafe au lait type thing. I really wanted a coffee in the afternoon. Um, so I'm down to those videos, but my reading then has suffered. Um, I think my goals for the weekend, I know The Wonder by Emma Donahue is going to expire before too long. I'm not sure exactly when. Um, and I'm really behind on Beauty and Thorns. And I'm behind on A Desperate Fortune, my two buddy reads. So thankfully, um, these are ones that are really easy just to read, read, read a lot of. So after I film this video that I'm going to film... I want to spend some good time on both of them because then I have another buddy read starting next week. And so I don't want to be like so behind on both of these. Um, I did finish, I showed you in that book tour. I did finish though, Betsy and the Great World. So I had less reading time this week just because of different, like we had like people over different things. Um, and uh, increasingly at bedtime, I'm just really not able to read. I'm too sleepy. So also I had to finish Betsy in the Great World. Got behind in both of my buddy reads. But que sera, sera, and hopefully, like I said, I can't remember exactly when The Wonder expires, but I'm really enjoying that. And this is like the third time that I've checked it out on Overdrive. And so ideally I'd like to finish this time. So we'll see how it is. But I'm feeling um, pretty good today. I'm feeling not awful today. Yesterday was an amazing energy day, which was great. Um, and... Yeah, so here's to good reading this weekend. Cheers. So it's Friday evening. It's been a day because Arthur's getting his two-year molars and now waking up earlier. And then I feel bad just taking him out and leaving Peter in there. So I'm just up earlier with both boys. And Peter has a ton of sores in his mouth. 
he ate tomatoes a couple day. And so I can't tell if he would still have sores from tomatoes because they give his mouth sores or if he's coming down with something. I just don't know. But it is 6.30 and the boys go down at eight. And my husband and I have started this Friday evening ritual where we pick up at a local place the most amazing, amazing, like best ice cream I've ever had, chocolate coconut ice cream. And it is dairy free. So I think that's great for all the vegans or people with dairy intolerance. It's amazing. And we watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, like the like 90s Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I don't know how. It's just we don't have many shows in common. And he's nostalgic about that show. I had never watched it before. So needless to say, I'm very excited about this. And it's a great way to end the week every Friday. Chocolate and lard? <laughs> Maybe you should try dieting, Salem. I don't need to diet because I am not fat. I'm Heading to the library to pick up a couple holds, including the Jungle Book for Peter. He's never seen the cartoon. So I wanted to pick that up and let him see it. And I also happened upon like a really beautiful picture book adaptation of the Jungle Book um, on my library's website. So that's on hold also. I feel like there's, oh yes, a paleo, my paleo patisserie book uh because i'm gonna make my birthday cake soon because it's in august and ideally i'd love to make like a gluten-free cake because gluten and most grains just my body's not happy with them um yeah so we'll see how that goes and gonna listen to the wonder on the way there it's gonna expire in a week so i don't know i need to get get cracking on it stop by the post office and the august book we picked for our phyllis whitney a group, me and Carolyn and Brie is Window on the Square. And I could have gotten this one from the library, but it was only $4 on eBay. So I got it. I love this. I never meant to do it. I only meant to frighten him, never kill him. So oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So this is our August book. This is the very first one we're going to read together. And it's an excellent condition. Like just one little mark, um, one little crack on the spine. So considering these were printed in like the 60s, I'm astounded at um, the good condition it's in. It has been like four or five years since I watched this. And I want to watch it again. It's just so good. This is the, um, the cover to it. It's put out by Acorn Media. It's like one of my favorite period dramas ever. So we started out the morning with a clean room and the rest of the room actually is clean but Arthur has been progressively pulling all the books off the bookshelf he is starting to sit for some books now which is really fun yeah you like that book here Peter what book did what book is now become a favorite of yours that we just read the circus, ship. the circus ship I'm so glad I bought this Peter loves the circus ship and I got this one at the library for Arthur who rave for babies the art is pretty mediocre, um, but when I saw it, I'm like, well, Arthur will love this, and he does. He's, I think we've read it five times, and I, it's Monday, and I brought it home on Saturday, so he really loves it. It's just all about babies. Emma really liked this one. Rex versus Edna, the very first chicken. That was pretty funny, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, you can see this. Oh, wow. We love dinosaur books, don't we?
Here, what are we going to do today? Um, see these? Mm -hmm. We're going to roll of these. What is and, that in your hand? Um, Play-Doh. Play-Doh, but it's white Play-Doh. Doesn't it look silly? Yeah. Because we usually make colored Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. So I saw online, apparently, you can color Play-Doh with markers, and it it has not been the funnest of mornings. It's Tuesday, July 30th. Very bad pots day. Um, I just checked out of curiosity my heart rate after cooking breakfast, and it was 120, you know, just from, like, scrambling some eggs and making some toast. Ugh. And then the air conditioning is not working. So I realize the air conditioning not working is a very first world problem. But especially when I have pots, like the heat really doesn't make me feel awesome. So we've all been pretty cranky this morning, to be honest. We're all just like uncomfortable and hot. Um, I brought the fan down. I'm going to sit in front of the fan and read. So it has taken a bookish turn for the better out there. <laughs> it's a cozy thunderstorm and rain just in time for the boys nap time. And the air conditioning is fixed. It won't be 85 degrees in here anymore. It's so exciting. And I only have 100 pages left of A Desperate Fortune and of Beauty and Thorns. So I am determined to finish them on this Harry Potter's birthday, July 31st. I'm going to end my July vlog here um, since it's the last day. And I'm really happy. I was actually able to kind of do some uh, bookish housekeeping and finish both of these. Uh, so after this, as soon as I'm done filming this, yeah, I still have some time. I'm just going to embroider, embroider, embroider. That's like all I've wanting, all I've been wanting to do all week. And now I have a bunch of audiobooks, and I can do that. I didn't finish the wonder by Emma Donahue. And I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to, because I have, I think three days left and I'll be starting, um, oh goodness, Crossroads of Twilight, the next Wheel of Time book. So it's not like I'm going to have a ton of spare audiobook time. So I might actually just have to put that to the side and go through Crossroads of Twilight and then come back to it. Um, because I'm really determined to not linger in this Wheel of Time book for like four months, like I have the past ones. Um, but yeah, I'm, it makes me my type A self exceedingly happy on this last day to clear up these last two buddy reads. Because then I was worried I would just take like even longer if I didn't get it done by July 31st. You know how then when you're behind, then you just get more and more behind. Anyhow, so Beauty and Thorns, unfortunately, I think I'm going to give three stars. Her writing is beautiful. It's just, it was the way she chose to have the layout of the story that kind of threw me off and made me less engaged. It's a Sleeping Beauty retelling. And I think maybe I went into it with the wrong perspective, kind of, you know, it says on the back that um, Margot Byrne Jones has become her father's muse. He painted her as Briar Rose, um, yet Margot longed to be awakened to love. And that was only like the last 50 pages of this 450 page book. And so I don't know why she chose to include that if she was only going to do it for about 50 pages. Um, these characters felt very real, very flesh and blood, but... It just kind of meandered in a way that I didn't know what to do with it. I think I would have preferred maybe then just like a zoomed up focus on one of the couples. Um, it was incredibly depressing because they were these people who were just so hedonistic and um, selfish, honestly. Uh, and the way the women in this were treated um, was really upsetting. So I love Kate Forsyth's writing. Um, but I think just I didn't get to know the characters maybe as up close and personal as I felt I had in the Beast Garden. Like, I love that we had just Ava in the Beast Garden, and I loved Ava. And, yeah, I was expecting to really like this because out of all the fairy tales, Beauty and the Beast is definitely lower on the totem pole for me. Um, just because I just can't get past the fact that it starts out and it's like an abusive relationship. And I know like Beauty and the Beast fans are probably tired of hearing that. I'm just saying from my perspective, that's what it always strikes me as. And I, it's hard for me to like really love the story. Um, so Sleeping Beauty has always really interested me as a fairy tale. But this version of it kind of was just very 
three stars for me. It started out the first half of it. It was like hovering between four or five stars, but then it just kind of went all over the place. And I don't know. I don't know what to make of it exactly. Uh, and I think maybe that's why it took me longer to get through these books because this was around three stars also. So the reason it's three stars, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a time slip book like most of Susanna Kearsley's are. And the two within the two timelines, the one that was present day, I loved. It would have gotten like four or five stars for me, honestly. But it was the one in the past that for some reason, I just couldn't get into it. And I don't know what it was about it that I couldn't get into it. But that would have been like two stars. So then together, it equaled out to a three star read. Um, I definitely was like the plot for this didn't, the plot from the past didn't seem all that predictable. It's not like I'm tired of Susanna Kearsley. I think this one just maybe didn't hit home with me as much. I'm not sure. Um, so this is not my least favorite Susanna Kearsley because there's one that I can never remember the title for. And I tried that in December and DNF'd it. I just was not interested in it at all. So I was definitely interested in this, but it's just compared to the other ones. It was one of my favorites, but I'm so glad that I read it and I look forward to discussing it with Bree and Robin and then look forward to discussing Beauty and Thorns with Kate. Um, I think also part of it is that I'm very much in the mood for classics and just like fiction that you can really sink your teeth into. And so I'm really excited for classics of on like my excitement has not left after making the TBR, which sometimes I get really overwhelmed after I do. I will be showing you briefly what I checked out on Hoopla, though I realize that will probably be the last clip. So this being the final day of July, I still had three borrows left on Hoopla, and I did not want to let them go to waste. So I picked The Virginian by Owen Wister. That's on my classics with on TBR, and his voice, the narrators. I had two to pick from, and I picked the one who totally sounds like John Wayne. I was like, yes, you should narrate The Virginian for me. And then um, The Big Rock Candy Mountain by Wallace Stegner. I have not made more progress on this um, since I last spoke about it, but I'm still very interested in it. And so I figured I could double up with audiobook too. And I just didn't know what else to get, honestly, because what I would love to get is the next um, The Seven Sisters audiobook, but I haven't read the one that they don't have the audiobook of. So I need to read that first. Ideally, I would read it this month. Um, or the Phyllis Whitney I'm going to read with Carolyn and Bree, but they don't have that one in audiobook. They just have the ebook. And then I got Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I was kind of wanting to do a like Dickens books in order of favorite to least favorite for Victober, but I still have three books left. I just don't know if it's realistic, but I was like, you know what? Why don't I just check out Hard Times and if I don't read it, I don't read it, but I might as well not just leave a hoopla checkout, you know, just sitting there. I keep saying it's going to be the last clip, but this really is the last one. And I just wanted to document that I have now the last, very last episode of Netflix's series of unfortunate events I'm about to watch while I do some exercises. And oh, I only have like 30 minutes left and I want to see the last episode. So I'm watching it. But I also am really, really sad. I just know it's going to hurt. So my plan is just to watch it and then just to go to bed. <laughs> because I know I'm not going to be like in the brain space to read or anything. I know it's going to make me really sad. I It's been a really well done series. I've really enjoyed it. I, I thought they've done a marvelous job with it and really capturing the spirit of the series and how it's like very larger than life and quirky and odd. And yeah, they've just done a great job. So I'm going to finish that tonight and then head to bed.